Hey guys, Greg Z here, and in this quick tips tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up Redshift Displacement in Maya. Okay, so I'm in Maya, and I've got this simple plane here, and the first thing I'm going to do is assign a new Redshift material, and I'm going to go into the Hypershade, and I'm going to graph that material, and collapse this down. So to create Redshift Displacement, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a Redshift Displacement node. And it's important that we connect this displacement node under the redshift displacement shader and not the displacement mat in our shading engine. So I'm going to connect that here. And for this tutorial, I'm going to use a standard Maya ramp node as our input displacement texture. So I'm going to connect this ramp node into the text map attribute on our displacement node. And I'm going to divide this ramp node into three sections. And I'm going to add these two additional points. And I'm going to make this middle area a 50% gray. So I'm going to set the value on the color of these points to 0 0.5. And this 50% gray is going to represent our midpoint uh, of our displacement. So the next thing I want to do is... I want to visualize this ramp node on our plane, so I'm going to grab the material and I'm going to plug the ramp into the diffuse color. And also for this example, we don't need reflection, so I'm just going to turn the weight down to zero. Now if we press six in our viewport, we can see the ramp node affecting our plane. So in order to uh, enable displacement, we also need to turn it on on a per shape basis. So we want to grab our plane shape and we want to go under the redshift section and we want to turn on displacement and tessellation now because this plane is fairly low poly and displacement is uh, based on the resolution of your geometry we want to set this to something fairly high to get a nice smooth result and get enough detail out of the displacement texture so we're going to leave it at a default of six subdivisions and I'm just going to create a redshift dome light just so we can illuminate the plane in our render. Now, I'm going to render this as is. And we'll see that we're getting some sort of displacement, but it's not really apparent. So I'm going to boost up the displacement strength. And I'm going to go into our displacement node and set the scale to something like 100. Now, if we render again, you'll notice that there, there isn't really much difference. And the reason for that is, is because we've set our scale, our displacement scale to 100, what we're going to expect is that it's going to go all the way from 0 all the way to 100. But because we've got the maximum displacement set to 1, it's actually going to clip that, that value of 100 down to 1. So we want to set this uh, maximum displacement on the shape node also to 100. And now if you render we should get a more apparent result. So it might not be visible in this render, but what's actually happening is the black area isn't actually going anywhere, and the middle 50% gray is being pushed up, and then the white is being pushed up even more. Now, the problem with this is that most of the displacement textures that you get from ZBrush, from Quixel, Substance Designer, they're based on a midpoint value of uh, 0.5 or 50% gray. So what we want to do is we want to adjust our displacement node to use a midpoint value of 50% uh, gray. So if we go back to our displacement node, you'll see there's this uh, change range section here. And this basically allows us to change the range of our uh, input displacement texture into something else. So in this case, what's happening is we're going from 0 to 1, and 0 is being our midpoint. So what we want to do is we want to shift that entire range down by 0.5. So I'm going to set the new range min to negative 0 0.5, and I'm going to set the new range max to 0 0.5. Now, in order to uh, visualize this better, I'm going to create a second plane but I'm going to turn off displacement just so we can get a comparison between displacement and non-displacement. So I'm going to align these side by side.
and I'm just going to do another render. Now what you can see is that the the midsection of our plane is not really going anywhere and the white is being pushed up and the black is being pushed down. So this is a basic example of how to set up uh, redshift displacement with a midpoint value of 0.5. So here's a more practical example of how to use displacement in redshift. Now in this scene we've got another plane and it's got this muddy ground texture applied to it. One of the things we didn't consider in the previous example was the scale of our scene. Now, in this scene, I've got this human base mesh here, and it's 180 units tall, and the scene scale is set to centimeters. So we want to set the displacement scale to something that is relative to the overall scale of our scene. Now, in this case, uh, a maximum displacement of 1 is going to roughly equal 1 centimeter which for a ground of this size isn't really going to make uh, much of an impact. So if we render this uh, with the settings here, you'll see that there's hardly any meaningful displacement. So I'm going to set these values to something like 15. And when I render, you'll see we get a more, a more meaningful result for what we want to achieve. Now, one thing to consider is that when you're setting these scales up, you want to turn off the auto bump mapping, as that's going to add an additional bump mapping effect on top of the displacement, and that can make it difficult to judge the accurate scale of your displacement texture. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to set the maximum divisions back to 1, and I'm going to turn on auto bump mapping. Now you can see that even though the divisions are set to 1, uh, we're still getting some sort of a, a nice effect, but that's actually all coming from the auto bump mapping. So if we turn that off, you'll see it's now relatively flat. So we want to make sure that the bump mapping is not interfering with the displacement when we're setting up the scale. So I'm going to set this back to 6, and I'm going to turn on auto bump mapping uh, once I've determined that 15 is the correct displacement scale. So one additional thing to consider is that when you're using displacement textures, you want to make sure that there's no additional color transformation on the output of your displacement texture. Now in Maya, when you bring in a texture into the hypershade, uh, by default, it's going to set the color space to sRGB. Now, unless you're using an actual texture that is sRGB, you want to make sure that this is set to raw. Now, in this case, I've got a 32-bit linear displacement texture. So if I were to set this to sRGB and do a render, you'll see we're, we're getting some sort of displacement. But if we keep this render and we turn it back to raw and we render again, you'll find that when we shuffle between these renders, the sRGB is actually being shifted down. So we're not getting the accurate representation of what this displacement is doing. So just keep in mind that when you're using displacement textures, uh, you're using the correct color space. 